Hugo, thank you very much for joining our podcast. Um, so for the people that do not know you, Hugo Meral is um, a friend of mine that is living in Portugal um, and a person I have invited to join us in the podcast. Um, not just because he's a, a person I know, but mostly because he's, he's a person that is often involved in, in projects that are out there to help others. And, and, and that is something that we obviously want to, to bring forward and you want to have as a reference for others to also be more inspired. Um, one of the, 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 the biggest or the, the, the most known project from, from Ugo, where Ugo is involved is the Raqueta, Raqueta para um, and But before we, we get into it, Ugo, if you would like to just talk us through who you are, what you're doing and help us to get to know a little bit more. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hugo, as Rui told us. Um, I'm, I was a tennis teacher for about 20 years, until more, uh, more or less three years ago, uh, when I stopped being a tennis coach because I had a small child and I need to give more attention to her. But during the time I was a tennis coach, um, I was inspired to help uh, small children to to play tennis and I started the project Raqueta por um Sorriso which means a racket for a smile in English um, which I wanted to use second-hand rackets to small child because uh, most of the kids who start playing tennis uh, usually they grow and they need to start using uh, uh, bigger rackets and Usually the old rackets go to the trash, uh, they throw it away and they don't care. So I decided to start asking the kids to give me the rackets so I could offer it to um, another kid who needed or couldn't have it. Um, at the beginning, uh, I have few rackets, but then I start to receive a lot of rackets and I got the problem that I didn't know what to do with <laughs> so many rackets, <laughs> and uh, which is a good uh, a good yeah. problem. Could be worse. Uh, then I um, uh, I have uh, usually people say um, stupid ideas go for good ideas, like the Kiss program, and I. I, I am a big fan of uh, Dakar Rally, which is starting today or tomorrow. And um, in the old times, the, rack, uh, the, the rally went to Dakar. So I had a dream of doing it. And on a tennis session, uh, someone told me on the class, uh, you should take the rackets to Dakar. <laughs> and I was like, mm, stupid idea, but <laughs> was it true? I went, when I went to, at night to home, I started to looking on Google Maps how to go from this car <laughs> on a car. Um, and uh, that time it gave me a map and it showed me the, the roads, was always the roads near the, the ocean. Uh, but uh, when I arrived to the class, I will tell you, well, um, I had an, uh, an old Lassie uh, Ixlan, and I still, I, I'm not selling the car because it was really old. And I, I would tell them, yeah, who wants to come with me uh, to the car on this car? And people were laughing, of course. But then one of them told me, yeah, I can go. <laughs> but at tonight, and it was a good person because he's a mechanic, so he <laughs> very thankful for it. <laughs> um, but um, when I, uh, at nights again, when I checked again the route, uh, Google Maps sent me to Istanbul and I was like, mm, impossible, like going to Istanbul, like doing the Mediterranean uh, roundabout and I was like, no, no problem, no, no, I couldn't do that. But then um, we started talking, 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 talking and we decided to try it. And we decided to put it on Facebook. Uh, you can look on Facebook, Raqueta por Sorriso. 
you will find it, um, but you have to go to the old, 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 old photos. And when I put it on Facebook, I received a help from an ONG uh, from Spain, from Catalonia, uh, which called it Sport, Sport Solidari, which uh, Solidary Sport in, in English. And they offer me like 200 rackets me to, to <laughs> So I was like, uh, uh, the last Ipsum couldn't <laughs> carry all this current. Yeah, so I received the help from a pharmaceutical industry uh, who sent uh, some medicines to Bissau, uh, which is uh, 200 kilometers from Dakar. And they told me, if you want to go to Bissau, we send the rackets by boat, and you receive it uh, there. And then that we decided to do it, and um, we had, I think we were lucky because we didn't have even a punch on the car, so uh, we arrived to Bissau safe. So, so you drove to Bissau? Yeah, we drove to Bissau on an Lancia hip. That part I did not know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and we, it was pretty cool. We went from Seville to Morocco, Tangier. Then we went to Casablanca. Uh, then on the south, we stopped on Dahla, which is the capital of um, Western Sahara. Mm -hmm. And we were a little bit afraid because there was um, some kidnapping of a French uh, journalist in the Sahara. And we were like, uh, maybe we shouldn't do this. But then again, we thought, well, it was 15 days ago, so there will be more security nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Something improved over time. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> and it was, uh, we, 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 to tell you the truth, I don't know how, um, of course, it shouldn't be so many securities 15 days before, but it will, in, in every 50 kilometers, we were stopped to, to be checked. And um, they told us if we didn't arrive to the next checkpoint on three hours, they would go looking for us. So it was, uh, it was a little bit boring, stopping every 15 kilometers, but it, we feel very safe with, with that. So we were arriving in Bissau and it was very, very, very good because uh, the Tennis Federation there was waiting for us and there were like uh, 100 kids waiting for us and for the rackets and we give them all and we decided with the Federation to do a workshop there where I would uh, give some advices to tennis coaches there and uh, the only question we put to the federation is that we we would give the, the rackets to the federation, and only kids with good grades uh, should have uh, free classes. Uh, so we just, we put it on paper, and the the kids that went to that workshop, almost ninety of the hundred kids finished the school here with good grades just because of the um, of being able to have tennis classes for free so it was a, a huge success and um, the ONG that support me uh, then invited me to go to Barcelona to start a, a similar project in Cap Verde mm -hmm. and and we did it uh, I went to five islands in Cap Verde that time I took like 500 rackets because it started to, to give some emphasis on the question. And then I started to receive the, um, uh, people asking me to support in almost every part of the world. We, we concluded the Guinea-Bissau, Cap Verde. We helped in um, Kenya too. We sent some rackets to Kenya for a project that still has worked for quite well and then we decided well in Portugal we have some poor people too so we contacted some, uh, some schools in uh, the 
place where I live, Body Valleys, uh, which is near Lisbon. And uh, we decided to do the project in two schools. And uh, it was a huge success because it was a school with a lot of uh, people from Pakistan, Ukraine, and Portuguese, of course. And uh, it helped to integrate the kids with each other. And there were like 30% of the kids didn't conclude the fourth grade, the preschool. And with that project in four years, which we worked there, on the last year, only 5% of the kids didn't uh, conclude the pre-grades at first opportunity. And we had like 80 kids on the classes. So almost every kid on the school were on the classes. So it was uh, pretty cool to do that. And then we start helping another, another project in Portugal because as I told you, I start having the kids so I, I didn't have uh, much availability. So we, we were able to, to do a project with a Portuguese um, project too. So we united it. It's called um, Academia de Tennis, Tennis Academy, mm -hmm. which is nowadays uh, uh, supported by the ATP Tour, which gives us uh, material uh, parallel for the tennis rackets, uh, grips, everything. So we have already six uh, tennis schools for all Portugal. Mm. So just for uh, kids, uh, the international project we only uh, uh, continue to support because the others uh, got sustained so they can do it by themselves. They, they get the, the, the rackets, we send it directly to them and then they give the classes but they already have some teachers there and all, all things is already working. Nowadays we're just uh, working with Mozambique uh, but this is a very special project because it's not on a school, it's on an hospital, it's for kids who are, we are with cancer. So there are two coaches there who go to the hospital and they teach kids uh, some tennis, but normally, and unfortunately, it's not for long because it's uh, kids who, who go from the interior of Mozambique, go to the hospital, but normally they don't, unfortunately, they don't, don't go out of the hospital. Okay, so it's in late stage. Yeah. You almost, you almost gave me goosebumps now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really it's tough story. Um, Ugo, um, first, in, it's, a, it's a really fantastic story, and, and I did not know all of that, so it's a... And it's, it's, I think it's one of the privileges of doing this project is I, I just happen to learn so much about people doing this type of things. Um, what, you have seen a lot of kids uh, getting the racket and a lot of kids starting to play in the tennis. And, and I, I remember I tried to play tennis in your, in your school, but I was not very talented, but it's really exciting. Um, what was the reaction you saw in their eyes? When, because... Of course, they got better grades, but that is a motivation that comes out of something. So what was the experience of seeing them playing and, and their eyes and their excitement about it? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, tennis is like uh, everything in life. Uh, kids have huge success playing it more than adults because they don't have afraid of anything. It's like if you ask a kid to walk on the top of a wall, you will walk, you will laugh, you will have a fun. And probably if, if it is you or me, we, we will try to walk. <laughs> we will be afraid of falling. And I think for tennis is the same. Uh, kids don't have afraid of missing a shot or missing the ball. Um, so the only thing that uh, being able to play because uh, tennis for them is uh, another game. It's a play. It's something to play, it's something different. Uh, something they normally normally will do better than the teacher on, <laughs> very quickly. So uh, they appreciate it, and of course, seeing them start hitting, just hitting the ball, then start 
passing the ball to each other uh, and like two years then they start playing or making games with each other is uh, for us is very good but I think um, for them is better and um, I think the, the just having a different game to play a game they think it's only for the rich people because tennis still is being marked as a rich people game um, so I think they they really appreciate it to, to have that opportunity. Nowadays, I think football starts to bring something like this because for a kid to play football nowadays, they have to go to soccer schools and not playing on the street like you played or I played. So yeah. I think tennis is the same. I, I, what I try to do is like taking the rackets to the streets, not the streets, but on the <laughs> streets for them to play. It's, yeah. That is the idea and they really appreciate it. And um, I, I I remember just just by listening to you now that you 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 got some support from ONGs you got you got some good reactions on Facebook but I I'm, I'm assuming that you had more challenges than just the drive driving to Bissau which by the way I probably I couldn't do it but what kind of challenges have you faced on in terms of engagement on yourself doubting and, and energy what was the journey to get there because you well, have done a lot in a lot of places. Uh, on the beginning, it was uh, really difficult because, of course, I got rackets from my students, which was a good uh, point, a starting point. Um, then my students start uh, talking with other people, but it feels hard to get some support because um, all the project uh, and we the the project received a, a prize in Spain for being the most sustained project in the world on that year in 2012, which was really really a great honor for me, because um, all the people the persons who enter on the project um, don't have money to to put it on it, so we're starting to do it some. I start sending like I, th I thought like 1,000 emails I think <laughs> asking and I I should have returned like 10 and probably nine telling no but at least I received some answer. I think the worst part is sending an email asking for support and the problem is not receiving a no. I think it's not receiving anything. People don't uh, reply. So we are always on the doubt if it's going okay or not. But what I decided to do with the support of some students was to do a, a tennis tournament where the income would go to the project. And on the first tournament, I had like 20 participants, which was pretty good because I received like 200 euros, uh, it was 20 people paying 10 euros. Mm -hmm. uh, we received like 200 euros and it was really good because we could uh, buy some parallel to, to put on the rackets. And then uh, on, this, uh, on the second year of the project, uh, the guys told me, why don't you contact clubs, uh, tennis clubs, and do some kind of uh, tennis circuit? And I started to do it, and for uh, my surprise, it, uh, the clubs were really interested. And at the beginning, we decided to the income of the tournament would be like 50% to the club, 50% for the project, because they would uh, give us the courts for the people to use it, the ball. So we decided, we thought that it was fair for them to get uh, mm -hmm. income. So. But at the end of the circuit, again, it was really good. All the clubs decided to give 100% of the income. And it was pretty good because we got like 3,000 euros, which enabled us to, to go to Bissau only with money. And we kept the circuit for four or five years. And it was uh, pretty good because we were always able to do all the project with that. And some companies started being interested in participating on the project because of the tournament, because they started to give some visibility. Yeah, branding. And I think that is uh, uh, the big challenge for, for people starting a project. 
uh, we always ask some help for, for from companies. And of course, for our side, it, it looks like uh, 100 euros, 200 euros is small for them. And uh, But what I learned with that is that companies, uh, probably they don't mind if it is like, if you ask 100 of 1,000 for them, probably is the same. What they want to know is uh, what we can give them. Um, uh, back. In, ch in change, yeah, back. Uh, they are not asking money or something. They ask us is visibility and... Uh, but but don't, you, don't you think, sorry, don't you think that's the big, in the, and that's something I struggle a lot um, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm doing these projects. And, and this project is another example where um, I, I find strange that our society and our corporate world, and I work for that as well, um, is looking at social causes and social projects and is looking to have a payback or, or having to, or looking to have a, um, and it's not a payback, but, but what is the return yeah, they can have on something like that? That's for me so strange. And it shows me that there is so much that we still need to do to create the awareness that sometimes it's not necessary to get something back. It's just enough that you are doing something for a greater cause. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I'm I 100% agree with you. But what uh, what for me is strange is that uh, some companies, if you go to their websites, they have the social social awareness uh, <laughs> button, and you click on it, and they ask you for sending an email, and you send an email, and they don't answer. That yeah. is, they, they could tell us, no, that's not interesting, or we don't care about that. Uh, that's okay. Uh, I think it's better than they not answer. But, well, society nowadays um, uh, is always in doubt of everything. It's like uh, if you see the Greta Thunberg, mm -hmm. uh, some people say she's a hero, <laughs> some people say she's a devil. Yeah. Well, the way you look at it and um, I think only she's talking about the the problems bringing off or awareness for the case it's okay so uh, and she's still 16 years old right there's yeah. nothing wrong of a 16 years old being doing that and yeah it's, uh, that's it's, it's uh, more people would just take the courage to come forward even if they don't bring solutions just to talk about the problem is not a bad thing you know it's uh, I I I I have a really hard time sometimes with our our social medias and our our LinkedIn's and Facebooks and so on, because um, I was just yesterday talking to my wife and I was like, if you share if you share a post of a kid just jumping against a wall, you get like six million likes. We get we share a post of uh, racket for a smile or share a post of whatever that is a project that is making difference for someone. And you get two likes and, and you almost get it from your family because they feel, <laughs> they feel pity. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry for you, right? And, and, that's, and that is, it's really, it's really a hell of a challenge. Um, if, at least for me, when, I, when, I, when I, I go to bed and I think like, how can this not create at least some engagement on people to at least pay attention and look into, look into it? And, and, and but, and, and I, have a, I, have a, I have a child, I have a six years old daughter, and you, you said you have it one, one as well. Um, yeah. And it, 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 it makes me even more um, um, motivated to keep on going, right? Because we need to, we need to start doing something for them as well. Yeah, so uh, sometimes uh, people ask me at, at the beginning of the project, uh, uh, why don't you quit? Uh, and I was like, if I make the people, one, one kid smile, uh, for me, it's okay. Uh, all the work is worthful. So uh, I have to say, I didn't have many doubts uh, because for me, it's like uh, as I told you, if one kid smiles, for me, it was okay. Everything was worthful. So um, I think being so persistent. Uh, I think people start looking for it more because, well, if this guy is so persistent on this, uh, let me see what he's doing. And probably it went okay. But I have to say I was um, lucky or not, but 
Uh, I was lucky to get uh, in contact with that ONG in Barcelona yeah. because they um, they start doing a lot of things and uh, like I think it's like each country is on its way because in Portugal I couldn't raise a lot of awareness um, but in in Barcelona and Catalonia I think I had like 200 rackets in one week because when they sent an email for the clubs, every club starts sending me rackets. I have to ask them to stop it <laughs> or putting on a delay. So uh, I could find, that's why I could send rackets to Kenya, to Sri Lanka, to every, everywhere in the world. How many rackets have you, do you, do you have in mind? How many rackets have you given away to the kids? Well, if, To Guinea, it was like 200, Cabo Verde, 200. To Kenya, it was like 1,000, oh. um, five, five times. Probably all over the world, I, I already sent 2,000 rackets, probably. 2,000 rackets, that's a great yeah, Small Junior rackets, the small ones. For kids. So I, I can see your rackets on your, on your wall. That people yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're, 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 these days, you're not a teacher anymore, but are you still playing? Yeah, I still play, I still play. Still play. Uh, 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 when I was a coach, I was always telling uh, people that when they start having classes, if they have three, if they could uh, continue after three months having classes, <laughs> wouldn't stop tennis uh, all over his life. You could so play better or worse, but it feels quite good. And so I, 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 so failed, I failed my three month deadline then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are, we are, we are, um, getting to the end of the, the time. Okay. Um, just to, to finish, um, is there anything you would like to, to, to say to people who are listening to us um, as, a, as, a, as a message for them uh, to, to engage, to, to listen, to, 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 to get on board on this type of project? What, what is your final message for everyone? Yeah, the, the message is, uh, as I told you like five minutes ago, it's Uh, when you decide uh, to do a project, uh, even if people say you want you want to see it or it, it's not a good project, if you believe it on it, go. Even if you are alone, go for it. Uh, if one people uh, get something from your project, it's a successful project. We don't need to 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 be like uh, a big organization like ONU and like one million people on a camp. If we are successful with one kid or one person, it's okay. It's it's a successful project, and and we can keep it it and start continue doing it, and it will uh, flourish for sure in, in, in time. Yeah, I'm, I'm I have no doubt about it, and uh, I I'm, I'm really hoping that uh, people also start to feel more about it. Hugo, um, is there anything you would like to ask us? Uh, how can I help? <laughs> yes, so person, yeah. we will also include you in our in our in our um, volunteers community because um, for people to know, Hugo just wants to help our project as well, and our project is all about that anyway. It's about awareness. It's about stories, so anyone can help. Yeah. Cool. So um, thank you for the time. I think it's been a fantastic conversation we'll make sure that more people Thanks. listen to it uh, and i hope you you also enjoyed at least i for sure enjoyed uh, yeah, i enjoyed it for sure yeah um so um we'll share it and hopefully people will listen to your story and they will look more even more to your project as well and hopefully to more projects like yours thank you very much thank you thank you everyone bye-bye